OK, let's go over the homework. Page 10. Correct the errors. One of them is correct. OK, number one. The plane arrived very late. The subject is the thing that is doing the verb. So you don't need to change the order into passive. Number two, four people were injured in the accident. The accident injures the people, so the people were injured in the accident. Number three, Bella is married to Jose. By the way, the name, this name is Spanish, so you pronounce it Jose. In Spanish, J it sounds the same as H. Number four. People are worried about global warming. Another possible answer is worried over global warming. Um, to worry over something gives the feeling that you keep worrying about this problem. You spend time and effort. Maybe you don't see a solution, but you keep worrying. In that case, we say worry over. Uh, this the use of worry over actually comes from the other meaning of worry. The uh, physical meaning of worry is to like play with something that annoys you. Like um, if there's like if there's something sticking out of your table uh, and you're bored and you're, or you're thinking and you might play with the thing that is to worry over something to worry something. Uh, so to say worry over is to use this kind of sense. Your mind is playing with or going back to some idea or issue again and again. Number five, astronomers are interested uh, in or by several new meteors. So the difference between interested in and interested by, interested in is the more common phrase. I'm interested in something. So that thing is just there. There's nothing special about that thing. But if you say by, this means that the thing elicits your interest. It makes you interested. So you can say that um, scientists or, or the astronomers were are interested in the new meteors. This is the usual way. If you say that they are interested by the new meteors, it means, for example, uh, the meteors have appeared. They are maybe approaching Earth. And so this has caused the astronomers to become interested. Uh, and in case you don't know, astronomers, 天文学家, meteor, ring shi. You can imagine why they might be interested. 
Number six, we were surprised by Harold's announcement. Uh, by the way, we're on page 10, page 10 of your handout. Number seven, Spanish is spoken by people in Mexico. This one is correct. Number eight, this road is not the right one. We are lost. So the word lost, right? Usually we translate that as um, don't know the right direction, milu. But if you think about it, the word lost in this meaning comes from the phrase to lose one's way. We're literally losing the direction. So when we say that we're lost, we're actually using the passive form of the word lose. So in English, it's Number nine, Pat should try that new medicine. He might be helped by the medicine, right? The the usual the original sentence is the medicine might help. So Pat might be helped by the medicine. Number 10, lunch is sorry, lunch is being served in the cafeteria right now, right? Right now, so it is ongoing. It is the progressive aspect. So is being served. Uh, it, so is being is present progressive, and then being served is passive. Eleven. Something unusual happened today. Uh, yesterday, sorry. Something happens. Uh, the subject of this sentence is always an event or situation. So this should be active. Zhu Dong Number twelve. Will be fixed the refrigerator today. Okay, so the original sentence is the refrigerator will be fixed today. Uh, and to form a question, you only need to move the first part of the verb cluster to the front. So this should be uh, will is moved to the front. The refrigerator be fixed today. Right, you only need to move the first part of the verb cluster to the front. 13. Nobody knows how old my grandfather was when he died last year, but he must have been over 100 years old. He remembers the flu epidemic of 1918. Right. So, uh, someone lives to a certain age if the person is still alive then it's the present tense right he is 100 right now but his, the person's grandfather has died so his life has ended therefore you use the perfect aspect because it has ended so we can say that the length of his life was very long. So the fact that his life has completed influences how we talk about this fact. So you would use the perfect aspect. OK, do you have questions about uh, page 10? 
Come again? Ah, uh, you're right. Sorry, this should be uh, past tense. He remembered. I didn't catch that. Thank you. Because he's dead. Yeah, it, his his memory is in the past. OK, thank you. Other questions? OK, let's move on to the next page. This is page 11. Uh, first one has been done for you. Let's do number two. Two people got hurt. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Present tense, past tense, past participle. All the same thing. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Santaizu. In the accident and were taken. To the hospital by an ambulance. You guys should know this because there was a movie starring Liam Neeson. Actually, I think it was a movie series, right? Called Taken. Take, took, taken. Number three, two, sorry, the movie was so boring. A thing bores a person. In Chinese, we say, the subject is the thing, the object is the person. So if you start with the thing, it's active. If you start with the person, it should be passive. In this case, you start with the thing. So it was so boring that we fell asleep after an hour. Number four, the students were helped by the clear explanation that the teacher gave. So gave, okay, first of all, past, this is passive, right? The students did not help anybody. It is the explanation that helped the students. The order is reversed, so it should be passive. Passive is a be verb plus the main verb in past participle. Be don't see, 再加那个过去分词. So there should be some kind of be verb here between students and helped. So what should it be? Gave is in the past tense. And there's more than one student, so it should be were. OK, moving on. Number five. The winner of the race hasn't been announced. Yet. I think this should be pretty clear. Number six, when and where this should be was. Was the automobile invented? Somebody invents the automobile, so the automobile was invented. OK, and then because it's a question. So the, the verb cluster is uh, was invented, two words. To form a question, you move the first part of the verb cluster to the near the front of the question. Uh, automobile is just a car. Number seven. Uh, I think we still use the the technical word automobile sometimes, right? In Chinese, we call this 自驾车. Number seven, my brother and I have always been interested in learning more about our family tree. OK. A family tree is a diagram about your parents and your grandparents and your ancestor. Ancestors, sorry. Number eight, I. OK. There are a number of answers here that are possible. This one is incorrect. You can say I do not agree. 
with you. You can say. I am not agreeing with you. In this case, uh, this it would not be a very good answer. Because uh, as we mentioned about the verb uh, about the verb think, if you say I'm thinking that something that means you're considering it. So when you say I'm not agreeing with you, that means I'm doing something that may look like I'm agreeing with you, but I'm not actually agreeing with you. But in this case, the second half of the sentence says, I don't think you'll ever convince me. So it should be very clear that these two people are not agreeing at all. So uh, the speaker should not have to clarify that they are not agreeing. So this is a, a less good answer. Uh, and then another way to answer this question to correct this sentence is. I am not in agreement. With you. It means the same thing, it's just longer. Uh, you would use this in more formal contexts such as negotiation, diplomacy, um, business meetings, that kind of thing. Number nine, it was late and I was getting very worried. About my mother. Uh, so this is the same as the verb for. Or or interest or worry or surprise. These kinds of verbs always start with the thing. And then ends with the person. So in this case, my mother worries me. Therefore, I am worried about my mother. Uh, in Chinese, we always translate this as Number 10, many strange things happened last night. Number 11, I didn't go to dinner with them because I had already. Eaten. If you had already been eaten, you would not be talking to us right now. Number 12 in class yesterday, I was confused. I didn't understand the lesson. Number 13, when we were children, we. Were. Very afraid of caterpillars, Mao Mao Tong. Whenever we saw one of these monsters, we. Sorry, ran. To our house before the caterpillars could attack us. I st still get scared. When I see. A caterpillar close to me. So the first two are because this story happens in the past. The entire story is covered in the past tense. But the last sen the last sentence belongs in the present, right? I still today get present tense. So this verb should be see. Present tense. However, scare is also a verb. Scare means to, you know, we say to scare someone means to make them afraid. So this should not be a verb. This should be an adjective. Get scared means the same as to be scared. Beishadal. Number 14, one day while the old man was cutting down a big tree near the stream, his axe fell into the river. He sat down and began to cry because he did not have enough money to buy another axe. Uh, so in this sentence, we see some uses of to verb to cry uh, here to buy etc we're going to talk about this uh, sometime in the future but in these cases these are not the main verbs of the sentence it you have to look at these verbs with the word to it is always to cry to buy uh, together 
uh, and they're actually not a verb. They're actually a kind. We call this a verbal. Just a 类似动词, but it's not actually a verb. We'll, we'll talk about this in the future. Um, and then, you know, while we're here, I might as well tell you about this. In English, we have a phrase called one fell swoop. In Chinese, we say yi wang lao jing. Uh, in this case, the word fell is not a verb. Fell is an adjective. It's a very old adjective. That means terrible. Uh, like awesome, scary, powerful. To swoop, today we still use this word. It's an, it's an action. It's, it's like, a, you know the Nike trademark? Like a Nike, like a That's a swoop. A check would be would have an angle. Uh, but the Nike symbol is a curve. We call that kind of action a swoop. Verb, noun, same thing. OK, do you have questions about this page? All right, moving on, page 12. All of these are active. Which ones should be changed to passive? How should you change them? OK, number three. Today, people eat it in almost all the countries of the Is that right? Yeah, yeah, OK. Today, people eat it in almost all the countries of the world. People, um, so three is correct. There's no reason to change this to passive. Number four. People can eat it alone or they may eat it with bread. Same, also no reason to change it to passive. Number five, people can melt it. Sorry. Uh, okay, so I see what's going on. So you notice in each of these sentences, the subject is people, right? What happened in the first two sentences? Cheese has been a principal food throughout much of the world for thousands of years. Principal means main or important. The first cheese was probably made, aha, the passive, in Asia around 4,000 years ago. OK, so the first two sentences, the subject is cheese. And in the next three sentences, the subject we have is people. Is people important to know. Does this subject give us new information? Not really, right? Like if it's not people, who else would it be? Martians? Of course it's people. And at the same time, the previous two sentences use the subject cheese. So in fact, we can continue using cheese as a subject uh, because using people doesn't tell us anything new. So sentence three should be. Today. It is eaten in etc. Number four. Again, right? People can eat it, so we flip that around. It. Can be eaten. Alone etc. Uh, alone or so. People can eat it alone or they may eat it with bread. You can shorten that to people can eat it alone or with bread. So it can be eaten alone or with bread. You don't really need to repeat the same subject. Number five, people can melt it by Ronghua and add it to noodles or vegetables. So it can be melted and added uh, to etc. Six, people can use it as part of a main course or as a snack. So how should we change this to passive? It can and then the verb be used. And then the rest of the sentence is exactly the same as etc. Number seven, 
throughout most of the world, cheese adds enjoyment and nutrition to many people's daily diets. Do we need to change this to the passive? Uh, throughout most of the world, enjoyment is added by cheese. I don't think that makes more sense. So number seven is good. Number eight, cheese is a milk product. Should we change this to passive? Is it possible to change this sentence to passive? No, you can't change this to passive, so this must be active. Number nine, cheese makers make most cheese from cow's milk, but they can make it from the milk of goats, camels, lotua, yaks. What is a yak? Somebody look up the Chinese. What is a yak? Uh, I know what it is. I just I don't know the Chinese word. Oh, no, you're talking about yuck. All right, yuck is disgusting. Uh, other animals, including zebras, bama. So sentence nine, should we change this to passive? Does the subject give us new information? Cheesemakers, this gives us new information, right? These are the kinds of people who do this to milk, to make cheese. So sentence nine is fine as an active sentence. Number 10. Some kinds of cheese, such as cheddar, are common in many parts in the world, but you can find other kinds only in small geographical areas. Should this sentence be changed to passive? The subject, some kinds of cheese, is this important? Yes, it is important information, so we should keep this as an active sentence. However, there is one part I would change. Many parts of the world. Number 11, cheese makers produce cheese in factories. Should we change this one to passive? Does the subject give us important information? Not really, right? Because who produces cheese? Cheesemakers. That's literally why we call them cheesemakers, because they make cheese. So we don't need to repeat that. So we can change this to passive. Uh, cheesemakers produce cheese. This is the first word. Cheese produce is is produced. And then the rest of the sentence is the same in factories. Number 12, they have to treat the milk in special ways. Should we change this sentence to passive? Does the subject give us new information? No, they, we don't need that. Also, the first sentence is already now passive, so we can continue that pattern unless we should uh, unless there is a reason to to use the active sentence. So they have to treat the milk. We we'll flip that around. The milk singular danshu has to be treated. In special ways. So have to treat the milk. Flip that around is the milk singular has to, and then the main verb is uh, passive, be treated. It's has to, right? And then to be treated is the passive. Has to is present, and then to be treated is passive. Uh, Right. 13. They must heat it several times during the process. Should we change this to passive? Yes, following the same pattern as 12. They do something, they do something. Uh, we have changed the previous two sentences to passive. We should also change this one. It must be heated several, etc. 14. 
At the end, they add salt and they pack it into molds. Molds, uh, molds, molds. Um, should we change this to passive? Yes, because the subject is also they. So at the end, uh, salt is added and it is packed into mold, molds. Fifteen, they age most cheese. To age something means to let it sit there for a, a period of time. They age most cheese for weeks or months before they package and sell it. Should we change this to passive? Again, yes, because the subject is they doesn't tell us anything. So most cheese is aged, etc. Before it is packaged and sold. By the way, in English we have this word. Which means old and we say we pronounce this word aged. You pronounce the E to let people know that you're not talking about becoming old. You're using this word to describe something or someone as old. Uh, English has a number of these kinds of adjectives where you should pronounce the ed, the e in, as well as the original uh, syllable. So, for example, the most common one is beloved as an adjective. Sorry, uh, as a as a person. The person I love is my beloved. You would say ed. But if you use it as an adjective to describe something or someone, you would say beloved. Right. Uh, and then another one is winged with wings, something that has wings. As an adjective. There's one more I can't remember. If we see it, I'll tell you. 16. They usually sell cheese to stores in large round pieces that they seal in wax. OK, so again, it starts with they. Let's change it to passive. Uh, cheese is the same subject as the previous sentence, so we can just use it. It is usually sold to stores in large round pieces that are sealed in wax. Seventeen. You can see these big. Sorry, you can see these big rounds of cheese in food stores like delicatessens. A delicatessen is a bodega. I know that doesn't help you. A bodega is like a small grocery store and convenience store com combination. So a delicatessen, would often called a deli is where you can go buy groceries and fresh meat and food, both. OK, 17, should this sentence be changed to passive? Is the subject important? Does this give us important information? I think it does give us important information. Because in the previous sentences, the subject is always cheese makers or cheese. In this sentence, we have a new subject, you. Hmm. If we, we can also flip it around to maintain the same subject, right? It, cheese. Cheese is here, right? You can see cheese. So cheese is this. You can also use that as the subject. These big rounds of cheese can be seen. Yeah, let's try that. These big rounds of cheese can be seen in food stores like delicatessens. 18, I like cheese and buy it often. Should this be changed to passive? 
Mm, the next sentence also begins with I. So I'm thinking we should keep this. It's a new subject. We are switching perspectives. So let's keep this. 19. I don't know all the names of different kinds of cheese. Yes, OK, let's keep this. 20. Often I can't pronounce the foreign name of the cheese I want. Same. If we use one subject in the sentence and this, the same noun continues, we should preserve the same subject. When I go to the delicatessen near my apartment, I simply point to a kind of cheese that looks good to me. OK, continue. 22. I hold my thumb and forefinger wide apart if I want a lot of cheese. OK, so here forefinger means index finger. So to hold your thumb and forefinger wide apart. If I want a lot of cheese or close together, if I want just a little. Frank and Anita, who work behind the ca cheese counter at the deli, always seem to give me just the right amount. So new subject, these people seem kind of important. So let's also keep active. 24, I'm glad cheese is nutritious. It's, it's healthy, gives you nutrition, gives you uh, what you need to live because it's one of my favorite kinds of food. Good. So if we look back at this, uh, the I guess essay, right? When do we change to passive and when do we keep the active? Usually, seven, eight, nine. These, uh, the subject is cheese, which is the main topic of the paragraph. So we keep that as the subject. And below here, eighteen and below, the subject is I or you know, Frank and Anita. These are people. Uh, they are not anonymous people. If you we changed cheese makers into passive because we don't really know them. We on, we only think about their job. Their job is to make cheese. They are basically anonymous people. But the last paragraph is about a specific person, the author, I. So we, this is why the word I is written in capital I, because it's like a name. So this is important information, and so we keep the active voice. OK, questions about this page? OK, what's next? Be supposed to. Did I ask you to do page 13? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, OK, OK, so let's do, do uh, page 13. To be supposed to. How should I explain this word? OK, so the verb suppose. Means something like. Uh, assume. Plus. Guess. So it's like a weaker kind of assume, jasa. So be supposed to literally means people think that you will do something. And so today we mean this to, to we say this to mean that you ha you should. It's something that you are expected to do. People think it is right for you to do this. That's why everybody assumes that you will do it. So be supposed to is already in the passive voice. People suppose you will do this. So you are supposed to do this. OK, number two. We're not supposed to tell anyone about the surprise. Number three, you aren't supposed to uh, talk to Alan about the surprise. Number four, my friend was supposed to. I think the answer is some for always some form of supposed to. 
my friend was supposed to call me last night, but he didn't. Number five, children are supposed to respect their parents. Number six, didn't you supposed be at the meeting last night? OK, that's a very weird sentence. OK, aren't sorry, weren't you supposed to be at the meeting last night, right? Last night is in the past. You use the past tense. The subject is you, so the be verb should be are. The past tense of are is were. Weren't you supposed to be at the meeting last night? OK, questions about these six? Yes. Number two. OK. We're not supposed to. It's really just missing this last D. Uh, it's reminding you that this is passive. You have to add the D. And number six. OK, so let me uh, give you the original sentence. You were supposed to be, etc. This changes to. You weren't supposed to be, etc. And this changes to. Weren't you supposed to be, etc. OK. OK, right, because in the question you move the first part of the verb cluster to the front of the sentence. 形成问题就是把动词组第一个字搬到接近前面的地方. Other questions about these six? Yes. Yes. It's always be verb plus supposed to. Yes, so supposed to is kind of like used to and have to. It's one verb. You can't separate these. Yeah. Uh, but used to and have to are active. Supposed to is always be supposed to because it's passive. OK, other questions? Uh, in Chinese, be supposed to is in gai yao, or is yu qi, bei yu qi yao. Right, so when you say, I suppose that you're using the original meaning of this verb. Yes. I suppose that something something means that you assume, but you're not exactly sure that something something. So I guess another way to say this is uh, assume. Maybe. A weaker kind of assume. Other questions about these six? OK, and then uh, the last part of the homework also be supposed to great. We're not supposed to open that door or three i have a meeting at seven tonight i am supposed to you need that be verb be there a little early to discuss the agenda agenda is the schedule for the meeting Yichen. fun fact the word agenda is directly from the latin in latin the word agendum means to be done in the future. And the in Latin, the plural of a UM ending verb uh, uh, participle is a. So agenda is plural, things to be done. So literally the schedule for a meeting. Four, I'm supposed to be at the meeting, but the second one is correct. I suppose I'd better go. This is what your classmate was asking. This means I assume, I guess I'd better go. So the second one is correct. 
Number five, where have you been? You were supposed to be here an hour ago. Exclamation point, Jing Tan Hall. Okay, questions about these five? Okay, uh, let's take a short break. When we come back, group two has asked for an extension, so we, we don't have a presentation this week. Next week, we will have two presentations, group two and group three. Uh, reminder, after your presentation, please uh, fill out the peer review sheet and upload it to Moodle so that I can give your group your grade. So group one, if you have not yet done that, please do that. Okay, let's take a short break. Uh, 这边有分好第四组在哪里 Where's group four? Hi, you have a new member. Okay, 
，研究所的东西。所以如果是要研究的地方，古多好玩。啊，都是哪里？或中世纪文学，西方中世纪都是哪里？哦，对，其实到了中世纪，因为我就是。现在从欧洲，很多罗曼史里面，定义上罗曼史里面就是拉丁文化，所以其实到了中世纪呢，那个拉丁文已经变得有点，对，这题材还蛮有意思的，很多就是新冒出来的单词感觉很熟悉，对对对，高比，高比，那个你你你也想不开去修哦。拉丁文这个东西，你不要随便修。对，那拉丁文很难找，它的它的文法概念全部都放在单字，所以那个有点像西班牙的，这个还可以。就是拉丁文那个单字的文法概念的意义已高到那个句子顺序完全不一样，你随便打乱，你随便打乱就算了。对，然后里面都已经把那些所有的对。所以就变成，比如说你第三人称在做，英文什么借题啊，对对，拉丁文三十六，因为你看嘛，有那个就放到单词，就是单数数嘛，阴性、阳性、中性，然后呃，主格、受格、间接受格，然后还有什么呼吁格，然后有一个。有没有叫做模格？其实就跟我们借系程式所说的。哦，借系程式。也放进去了。那还会有那些例外什么吗？就变化的例外？没有例外那么多啦。那那个有没有例外？呃，通常例外都是从希腊文来的单词。哦。本身它。过来讨论一下。对对对，它等于是过来的。很可怕，很可怕。真的。啊，没有回去。等一下，我刚刚说了三十六个，但是我漏掉一个，主格、受格、间接受格、由格、呼吁格，居然漏掉一个哦，所有的。哦，那那一般的是什么？没有回去研究。呃，其实还好，主要就是说，哎，当然教材大部分都是罗马文化。所以你是开？不是我开的。哦，我那有空。我以为，你说你手有开？我记得你那有。我可能记错了，但是就是。对啊，应该。我现在新闻家只有八，然后有五个是奇怪的。啊，有奇怪。那就是我心上的，有三个，一个是。但是我的。导师哦，嗯、我确定。嗨，所以确定是第几组？第七组。第七组，好，那我,我根据一下你的学号，然后回去帮你写上去。学号多少？一零四二。一零四二。一六一三。一六一三，好，回去帮你画进去。然后你，你现在就可以直接融入就是第七组的那个，那个叫什么蓝圈。
是在发呆。那个录音录音单。好，好，这是好，这是另外一份的新一季，谢谢。对，主要动词全部全部都是。哦Okay, let's talk about this week's lesson, auxiliary verbs. In Chinese, we call this 助动词 Auxiliary is a military term, which means assistant or assisting part of the army. So, for example, an auxiliary battalion in Chinese would be uh, 协助的军呃的部队 right? So it's a military term. Auxiliary verbs are words that belong with verbs, and they help the main verb, but themselves are not technically the verbs of the sentence. In this sentence. It would have been being taught last week, but for the typhoon. But for means if not for, 要不是 So this main part of the sentence means that this thing last week in the past would have been taught for a period of time continuously, except that something prevented this from happening. In Chinese, we don't have to translate every idea in this sentence, but it would look something like, uh, 要不是因为台风，上礼拜呃将持续完成教这个东西 ，something like that. Okay. The point is that in English sentences, this is the verb cluster, 动词组 The last word is. Usually considered the main verb. Everything before this helps us understand the conditions of the main verb, the time, the certainty, treating xing, the completion, the continuing of the main verb. So all of these words are auxiliary verbs. Now, we have already talked about have. And we are going to spend. Are we? We're going to talk about B sometime in the future. I think in maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks. There is a week on. I think maybe even next week. Actually, I want to check when. When are we talking about B? Okay, this week auxiliary. Ah,、uh, in two weeks. We're going to talk about be, do, let, make, have, and get. Yeah, the the special ones. So, what are we talking about this week? We're going to talk about a specific kind of auxiliary verb called modal verbs. Unfortunately, modal is a word that comes from philosophy. 
Modal means degree of certainty, 确定呃、uh, 程度 So which English has a finite set of modal verbs. 英文的那个 modal 动词是有限的 So what are the modal verbs in English? These are the modal verbs. They all tell you a degree of certainty. 一件事情的确定程度 You know what? I think we should add will to this list. Will and shall.、Uh, we talked about will and shall briefly in the past. Okay, so. Let's go through these one by one. Can is exactly the same as be able to. Could is the past tense form of can. If the sentence is in the past tense and you need、uh, to use the expression can, you would use could instead. In the past tense. Now, what is the future tense of can? Can the 过去式是 could， 那 can 的未来式是什么 ？Yeah, could is past, can is present. So, what is the future? Trick question: There is no future, so you have to say "will be able to." Um. So we all know what "can" means, right? It could happen. It could not happen. You, um, we. It's not sure. Same, uh, the similar for will, right? Will means it will happen. It is very certain. Would is the past tense of will. If you need to say will, but the sentence is in the past tense, you say would. Same for shall and should, right? Shall is when somebody tells you to do something, and if it's in the past tense, you say should. However, because we no longer use shall to mean order. Shall therefore is no longer commonly seen in modern English. So should now just means be supposed to.、Uh, in both senses of the word, right? In Chinese, also there are two meanings of should. Morally, 道德上 you should do something, or probability, 几率上 you should do something. There's the same confusion in English. You have to look at the context. 要用前后文判断 Yeah, we very rarely use the word shall today. Shall,、uh, if the subject of shall is the first person, then it it just means will. If the subject of shall is not the first person, then it is an order. 命令 Yes, we right. Shall we? The word we is first person, so it simply means will we. Okay, ought to is exactly the same as should and be supposed to. The origins of ought to are lost in the mists of time. 已经遗忘在英文的语言史之中了 Now, we start getting into a little bit more confusing territory. May and might. May has two meanings also. One is moral, 道德上 You are allowed to. You may use a dictionary means you are allowed to 
use a dictionary. According to the rules, you can use a dictionary. The other meaning is probability. Uh, 几率上, may is weaker than can. I'm thinking if that's right. OK, how about this? May is. So can is um, more objective, right? If you look at the situation, it could be this, it could be that. May is more subjective, Is it going to happen or not? Uh, so this is more like will, right? I say it will happen, it will not happen. Will it happen? If you don't know, that's when you use the word may. Might is not the past tense of may. Might is a weaker form of may. The probability is lower. And then finally, the word need uh, as, a, as a modal verb is not very common. Often you would find it in the phrase need not. So for example, you need not worry means you don't have to worry. Uh, or in sometimes even older uh, uses of English, you might say you need be more careful, which simply means the same thing as you need to be more careful. But both of these are correct. It's a different use of the word need. Right, so actually we don't have to worry too much about need as a modal. Now, we've been talking about the moral sense and the probability sense of so-called degrees of certainty, trading the trading the But there is one more sense we have not yet talked about, politeness. When you are talking with somebody else and you want to ask them to do something, or you want to ask them for information, you want to try to be polite. And in English, the way to be polite is to be uncertain. Uh, so for example, uh, if I say, pass me the salt by Yan Ba Chuan Gulai. You're never gonna say this. Why did I use this sentence? Close the door. Yeah, 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 okay. Close the door. This is an order. I'm telling you to close the door. If I want to be more polite, I can say, I can turn this into a question, right? A question is less certain than a statement. Can you close the door? Now, most people, when we hear this sentence, we know that it's an order, but it's a more polite kind of order. To be even more polite, you would say, could you close the door? Could is the past tense of can, so it is less direct. There is an added layer of time in between the past and the present. So it is more polite. Uh, and then you would slowly move down to even less certain kinds of orders. So would you close the door? Is no longer asking 
do you have the ability? It is now asking, are you willing to? You may have this ability. So it's even more polite. It's taking the other person's thinking into consideration. And then finally, the most polite form is might. Might you close the door? Right, as we said, may is uh, uncertain will, and then might is an even weaker may. So this is the weakest, most polite kind of request or order. Now, we're only talking about grammar, right? If you really wanted to be polite, you should add more words to make this even more uncertain. For example, This is no longer a question of grammar. You're adding more words to make the action even less certain. Uh, so that's what it is in English. The less certain you are, the more polite you are. However, every rule has an exception. We're learning English after all. The exception is you have to match the level of politeness to the situation. If you are too polite, people will think that you're sarcastic. If you ever say the last sentence, people will get mad at you. Because there's no reason to be this polite. Especially in American English, right? In America, everybody is equal to everybody else. Uh, there is technically legally no separation between different kinds of people so if you put if you are too polite to somebody you're elevating them to such a high place that they don't belong it doesn't match the situation as a, you know citizen to citizen equal person to equal person so uh, people will think that you're making fun of them you're being sarcastic uh, in British English, they care a bit more about the differences between people. So uh, in American English, you are more likely to hear, can you close the door? Or if the person is being very polite, could you close the door? In British English, you are more likely to hear, uh, would you close the door? Or if the person is being very polite, might you close the door? But you know, this one is never a good idea. OK, questions about modal verbs. Yes. Ah, right. So close the door, will or maybe would you, right? This kind of thing. Yes, why do people add this? Because they know simply saying close the door is not polite. So they add this to the end to make it a bit more acceptable in social situations. Uh, but in fact, close the door, will you? is about as uh, polite as just saying close the door. The, there's not a big difference. In fact, if you say, uh, will you close the door? This is actually less polite than simply telling somebody to close the door. Why? Can you think of the reason? Why is will you close the door very impolite? It is a bit sarcastic. Why? Because will is asking like, will you or will you not? So in Chinese, we the first sentence we would translate this as right? You're stuck in the middle. Will you or will you not? Whereas if you simply say, 
close the door, there is no attitude. It's very neutral, 非常中性。OK, other questions? When you have lots and lots of auxiliary verbs, like uh, in this sentence, right? There are lots and lots of auxiliary verbs. The modal verb always goes first, right? The first one is would. The modal verb always goes first. And the main verb always goes last. Taught, this is the main verb. In the middle, the order is determined by grammar, right? We said um, uh, perfect progressive, 完成进行式 So first you have perfect, uh, then you have progressive, and then at the end of aspect you have the voice, active or passive. So the order is、uh, modal, perfect. Progressive, passive, main. In a verb cluster, this is the order. And if you know if if something is missing, you just skip that part. Wu Zemian. Okay, yeah, I think that should be everything. Questions? Other questions? Okay, then let's do some practice. Handout page thirteen, bottom third. Correct the errors in verb forms. Not all sentences have errors, so if it is wrong, please correct it. Twelve questions. I'll give you. Now these are pretty fast, right? I'll give you six minutes.
OK, to answer these questions, you should also remember two rules that we have mentioned in class. In the verb cluster, the first verb tells you the tense. 时间. And to form a question, move the first verb close to the front. Of the sentence. So. One, he can hear it. Two, correct. Three, again, can hear. Hey, Asia. Four, can you help me? Correct. Five, same as four. Can you help me? Six, they can't help me. Correct. Seven, he ought to help you. Right on the left, if he can is not he cans, then on the right, he ought to should not be he ought to. If this can doesn't change, then this ought doesn't change. Eight, he is able to help you. This is correct. Number nine, he is supposed to help you. Number 10, they have to do it. Correct. Number 11, we have got to do it is correct. We're going to talk about this in two weeks when we talk about the word get. Uh, but you can say have got to. This is correct. The word get is itself is not very correct. Get is like the exception to all of the rules about auxiliary verbs. So, you know, if it appears in a weird place, uh, it's hard to say that it's wrong. She should tell. The truth. OK, questions about these 12. All right. Next page. We are now on page 14. Here are. Another 12 questions. This time I'll give you. 12 minutes. Sorry, 10 minutes. Uh, so one of your classmates just pointed out to me that on the previous page, number three can also be he could hear it. Both of these are correct. Uh, number three. OK, please continue.
OK, uh, let's uh, compare answers two minutes early. Number one, if you have a car, you can travel around the United States. Number two, during class, the students must sit quietly. Number three, when you send for the brochure, which means when you ask for the brochure, brochure in Chinese is DM. You should include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Uh, in Chinese, this is xing All in English, we also call this a return envelope. Number four, a film director must have control over every aspect of a movie. Number five, when I was a child, I could climb to the roof of my house and see all the other houses and streets. So can, or sorry, could climb and could see. Both of these have the same grammar. Number six, we need to reschedule. Yeah, guys, again. I won't be able to see you at the time we scheduled for tomorrow. Right? Won't is will not. This is future. The future of can is be uh, will be able to. Yeah, thank you. So won't be able to. Number seven. I broke my leg in a soccer game three months ago. Used to means uh, in the past had a habit. This happens only once three months ago, so you actually do not need a modal verb. I used to go to bed very early. Now I go to bed very late. I used to in the past have this habit. Uh, but breaking a leg, I hope, is not a habit. Number eight. May you please help me with this? If you uh, remember, we talked about polite questions. No, no question started with may. So we have to change this. Depending on how polite you want to be, you can say will, can, could, uh, would, might. I should write this down. Okay, so will, can, could, would, might. Uh, will is the least polite, might is the most polite. Number nine, many students would rather study. S rather means want to compared to something else. Ninke would rather study on their own than going to classes. So this is actually would study and rather than. But you can move rather to after uh, to uh, before the main verb if you want to. So you can also say would study. Rather than both are uh, good answers. Number 10. We are supposed to bring our books to class every day. Number 11. You can have 
a very good time as a tourist in my country. My country has many different climates, so you had better plan ahead before you come. Had better is a phrase in English that means it would be a good idea to do something. You had better do something means it is a good idea for you to do something. Uh, had here is not past tense. This is simply how the phrase looks. No matter the tense, it is always had better. 不分时态都是长这个样子. And number 12, when you visit a big city in my country, you must pay attention to your wallet when you are in a crowded place because a thief may try to steal it. OK, so here it tries to confuse you with maybe, right? Maybe is an adverb. It simply means perhaps. Don't think of it as may plus be. It's one adverb that means perhaps. So uh, if I say it may be sunny tomorrow, this if you want to use the word maybe, it becomes it will maybe be sunny tomorrow. You can see how the word maybe is kind of different. It's not part of the verb cluster. It is an adverb. OK, uh, and then like we also saw this word, right? Must. Must just means needs to. Or uh, it could mean, sorry, sorry, must just means ought to. Uh, same two meanings. Morally, you must be sure. Or probability, you must means eating. That doesn't help. Like, uh, you, he must come here tomorrow. Morally, he is supposed to come here tomorrow, but he must be here soon. Probability, it is very likely that he will be here soon. So in English, the words of moral and probable, sorry, th these modal verbs have the moral and probable meanings at the same time. You have to look at the context, Chen Hoen to see which one you you are using. OK, do you have questions about these 12? Yeah, so actually I should say like must, may, might. Yeah, these these three go together. Must, may, might is weakest, must is strongest. OK, really? Questions? No questions? OK, so um, I have some bad news for you. The homework. Is up to page 19. Please finish up to page 19. This homework is not just about modal verbs. It is a review of everything we have learned so far. And the bad news is the further you get, the harder the questions are. Uh, but you know, there's a silver lining, which is that um, the further along you get, the closer these questions look to the final exam. So it's a more direct kind of practice. So up to page 19. See you next week and please prepare group two and group three. Please prepare your presentations. <laughs>